Hello and welcome. My name is Ann Robinson, Marketing Manager of Hope for Haiti's Children. I'm excited that you're joining us for an update of what's happening in Haiti and our ministry to the children there. Ken Beaver, founder and president of Hope for Haiti's Children, will now talk to you about the state of Haiti and our current operations. Thank you, Ann, for that introduction, and we just appreciate your joining us today for this update on the situation in Haiti and how our Hope for Haiti's Children ministry is operating there. We, um, I have to share some bad news. Uh, many of you know and heard about the past six months have been a very difficult one for all of those uh, who are living in Haiti right now. Gangs have grown stronger. Uh, they held a great deal of power. The United Nations left in 2019, and that has left a vacuum. In the pe and the, the security is really difficult right now for many uh, who don't, do not feel safe in their own homes. The uh, fact is that we've had a lot of uh, gang violence throughout many parts of Port-au-Prince. And in addition, we've had more than 460 kidnappings uh, that have been reported this year, which is more than double the kidnappings that were reported uh, back in 2020. We also have had uh, American and Canadian missionaries uh, kidnapped. Uh, we, the, uh, we had 17 Christian aid mission um, missionaries kidnapped back on October the 16th, and five have been released, but 12 are still held hostage. And so we would ask you to keep them in your daily prayers. But now the good news. Despite all of this, we are so blessed to be fully operational thanks to this faithful staff in Haiti. These photos only show about a third of our staff, principals, and leaders in Haiti who are carrying out the day-to-day -day operations of Hope for Haiti's children every single day. We began this ministry 26 years ago with this model of having a trusted network of local Christian leaders, and this continues to today. Our schools remain open, our orphanages are still operating well and, and serving our children, and our capital projects are moving forward. I continue to be amazed at how well our Haiti team is able to navigate through the maze of difficulties they face on a daily basis to keep our programs moving forward seamlessly. Though we in the U.S. have not been able to travel there for the last few months, our verification systems are working well with full receipt tracking and photo verification of all the projects and work that's going on. And our orphan and, and uh, sponsored children are being nurtured and educated and trained. A few recent events uh, in October, a hundred of our teachers traveled to uh, uh, Tomazo for a three-day intensive training that was uh, for a uh, a program that thanks to the First Colony Church of Christ, uh, we received a grant to help them be able to receive this, and they really benefited a lot from this training program, which is going to help all the children in all our schools. In addition, in the bottom right photo is from a few days ago, December 5th, uh, baccalaureate graduation of the Delma Theological Seminary, where five of our HFHC sponsored uh, young men who are now government licensed ministers. So proud of them, able to not only preach, but to perform uh, weddings and funerals and just be a big, a huge service to their communities. Uh, the photo on the bottom left is our earthquake triage team. On October 14th, a 7.2 magnitude earthquake struck the Western Peninsula of Haiti. It was devastating. Uh, thanks to many of you and sending in relief funds, our triage teams have been able to travel on dangerous roads to help nine communities which had help from no other agency. We're just grateful as this next photo shows of, uh, of that work. The top left photo is from one of those medical clinics that provided care to over 500 patients with broken bones, uh, burns and wounds. They also distributed rice and beans, cooking oil, uh, cornmeal, sardines to more than a thousand families in care bags, which also included a tarp and a hygiene kit. At the bottom of the screen is a Google map of the nine communities where help has been provided. As of this past week, our Haiti team has rebuilt 21 homes with six more planned for completion by the end of this month. We also have started on a complete rebuild of a Christian school church facility in Camp Perrin, Haiti, and also repairs for the La Cille Christian School. As we look ahead, Project Hope 2030 is our 10-year initiative to improve all aspects of our ministry 
to the more than 3,000 children we are serving in Haiti. At this time, we're going to see a short video, which is an introduction to our ministry and to Project Hope 2030. Following the video, Tanya Hunt, our Vice President, will share with you what has been accomplished this past year and our exciting plans for 2022 with Project Hope 2030. Thank you so much for your prayers and support. May God bless you. Haiti is just a two hour flight from the US, but remains the poorest country in the Western Hemisphere. The majority of Haiti's 11 million citizens survive on less than $2 per day, and 80% of families live in extreme poverty. Haiti has one of the highest levels of food insecurity in the world, with two thirds of children under five suffering from anemia, and one fifth suffering from chronic malnutrition, which stunts their growth. Due to the cost of education, only 30% of children reach sixth grade, and only 20% of teens attend high school. These grim realities forecast a bleak future for many children without a safety net and desperate for hope. At Hope for Haiti's Children, we provide opportunities for caring individuals, organizations, and churches to nurture, educate, and train at-risk Haitian children to become outstanding leaders. For 26 years, our proven approach involves walking side-by-side -side with local, trusted Christian leaders to build, operate, and maintain 10 schools, two orphanages, and a summer camp. Through our Child Education Sponsorship Program, compassionate individuals and families provide children with hope for a brighter future. Sponsored children receive an education, physical and spiritual support, and positive engagement necessary for success. A $36 per month sponsorship provides a Haitian child with entrance fees and monthly tuition at a Christian school, a new school uniform and backpack every year, an annual medical exam and access to medical care, and special gifts at Christmas and at the end of each school year. We ensure that 100% of sponsorship donations are used in Haiti to benefit the children, and our sponsors look forward to receiving an annual update, photo, and letter from their sponsored child. We now have more than 2,200 children sponsored, but many more are waiting. We encourage everyone to become a sponsor to change the life of a child today. Project Hope 2030 is our 10-year plan to strengthen the programs and services provided to all of our sponsored children. The plan follows a comprehensive and sustainable framework to child development. Project Hope 2030 addresses ongoing efforts to provide sponsored students with excellent Christian education. Some of our 10 schools need significant capital investments and all need additional teacher resources. Project Hope 2030 will bring an engaging learning environment to every child with instruction from a qualified teacher in an individual well-lit classroom. A Haitian proverb states, a hungry child cannot hear. In response to the overwhelming need for adequate nutrition, Project Hope 2030 will ensure that every student receives a hot, nutritious lunch every school day and free access to clean drinking water. With so many families lacking health information and access, the Project Hope 2030 goal is for our school nurses to have a comprehensive curriculum to teach our children about good health and hygiene. In addition, we want to improve accessibility of healthcare for all of our sponsored children. Project Hope 2030 highlights the need for excellence in orphan care by planning facility expansions and improvements and by developing vocational training programs that will equip older students with essential skills for independent living. With Christian values at the heart of our mission, we remain committed to give each student a biblical foundation and discipleship experiences. Within the Project Hope 2030 framework, all students will receive spiritual training at their local school and leadership opportunities at Camp Hope and weekend retreats. Our staff and board regularly prioritize Project Hope 2030 efforts and direct funding to the most needed areas. 
Project Hope 2030 financial partners receive regular updates on the progress of all these efforts. Our organization is committed to financial transparency and accountability, consistently earning the highest score given by Charity Navigator, the leading nonprofit rating agency. We invite you to share in the joy of bringing hope to impoverished Haitian children, giving them an opportunity for a brighter future. Your prayerful encouragement and generous financial support through both Child Sponsorship and Project Hope 2030 will ensure that together we continue to make a difference one child at a time. Project Hope 2030. What you see on the screen now is the child development framework for Hope for Haiti's children. Not only does this benefit one child, but Project Hope 2030 is a comprehensive approach that actually helps all of the children in all of our schools. What I'm going to do in the next few minutes is to just step through this model. First up, Christian education. Christian education is really where it all begins. On the right hand side, you will see a picture of a classroom. All of the kids sitting at a desk, facing a blackboard, listening to their teacher. It is our goal that every children, every child learns in an individual engaging classroom in a Christian school taught by a, qual a qualified, well-equipped teacher. At Hope for Hitties Children, we have two orphanages serving 66 children. 10 schools serving 3,000 plus children. These are located all over the country. We have three of those schools located right there in the bustling center of Port-au-Prince. Some are in villages and two are actually at the very top of a mountain, very remote. One component of Christian education is the investment in infrastructure to make sure that those schools serve the children in the best way possible. In 2020, this is the Kazo Christian Elementary School, and this is exactly what it looked like. Uh, a, great, a great building. Uh, inside is an auditorium. So on Sunday mornings, this is church. On Monday through Friday, chalkboards are put up between classrooms, little benches face the blackboards, but it's a one-room schoolhouse. So as you can imagine, it's not a very easy environment to learn in. 2021. What we've done this year, same school, three stories. The first floor is still an auditorium. Church still meets there on Sundays. The school can use it throughout the week. The second floor, individualized classrooms throughout, educating kids in, the, in kindergarten all the way through the 10th grade. And then finally, the rooftop. They meet up there in the mornings and they raise their flag. They sing the national anthem, say a pledge, and they can also do some, get some exercise up there throughout the day. You can see walls at the very top, so they're safe, but they can get a little bit of the exercise that they need throughout the day. Last month, another improvement here, a kitchen. So cooks are pretty excited about this new improvement because they're cooking on stoves with propane tanks. As you can imagine, there's some smoke and fumes. It's well ventilated. They have a lot of space to cook in. They also are able to serve the children better here from this rooftop kitchen that they've created. Another school has the same issue as we had at the Kazo Christian School. This is the Hinch School. Here's a peek inside. Again, on Sunday, this is church, but on Monday through Friday, chalkboards are put up, benches face the chalkboard, and all the classrooms from kindergarten through sixth grade are right here. As you can imagine, when kindergartners are singing, it almost shuts the school down because it's hard to hear. If you're a teacher listening right now, you can see that this one room schoolhouse is not a very effective learning environment. Here's an aerial view. The yellow dotted line that surrounds the property is the property lines. There's no room to expand out. So what we're gonna do is expand up just like we saw at the Kazo School just a second ago. The first floor will be an open auditorium. Second will be classrooms and then a rooftop as well. So right now the school doesn't look like what you see right here. It has been demolished. It is just flattened and there's gravel right now preparing the foundation to build up. 
what we did is we rented some space right down the road so those children can be educated this year. Food and water. You can imagine with a year like they've had that food insecurity has risen and is a real issue. Uh, feeding these kids is core to what we are very, very focused on. We are so thankful for donors and partners who come alongside us in this effort. Sponsorship dollars do not cover feeding children. Project Hope 2030 does. We have to raise money for this every single year. And so far we've been able to. Our goal is that every child in every school receives a hot nutritious meal all five days a week. Kids love this program. And you can imagine when they're at home and if they choose not to come to school, they may also be faced with no meal that day. Attendance is very high at schools. Kids don't think twice about praying before a meal. They know to thank God for this great provision. They love the variety. Sometimes it's rice and beans. Sometimes it's spaghetti. Sometimes it's kind of a corn meal that they enjoy. But nevertheless, this is a great blessing for these children. Recently, I asked a teacher, I said, what is the number one need that you have at school? And he immediately said, make sure they get fed. He has seen the effects of children who can't focus when they're hungry. Healthcare. Our goal is that every child learns how to care for their body and has access to health care to treat all urgent medical needs. Every year we have an annual child care clinic where each, each student gets an exam. Unfortunately, these past couple of years, we've not been able to go. U.S. mission teams have helped us in this effort, but thankfully our Haitian staff, local doctors and nurses have stepped up and answered the call and provided the treatment that our children need. Throughout the, the rest of the year, nurses are in every single school. So if there's an issue, they're able to address it. In addition, they're teaching health educa education classes um, in the classroom. In 2021, we've been working hard to build a medical clinic out at the Thomas Hope Center. And here you see a picture of that. Soon, mission teams, when they're able to come in, can treat children out of this clinic in addition throughout the year, all year long through a Haitian staff. Orphan care, two orphanages, 66 children. Our goal is that every child is cared for by Christian parents in a well-maintained facility with proper nutrition, housing, and opportunities for vocational training. Here you see a picture of 11 of our kids. You can see happy, healthy, and well cared for. Kids grow, things break, and it's always a challenge to continue to stay ahead of anything that they need, but we do our very, very best to make sure that these kids get the best care that we can possibly provide. Always looking for improvements. Let's show this next slide here. This is the Thomas O. Christian Orphanage, currently home to 12 children. There are many, many orphans in Haiti. And so we are excited that ground has already been broken on another wing for the dormitory that you see there in the yellow block. A boys dormitory will be built on the right hand side. So we'll have 12 girls on one side and 12 boys on the other. We are really looking forward to having these 12 children join our orphanage family next year. At the other orphanage at the Cazot Orphanage just last month, we had a great improvement. 30 solar panels were installed on the roof of the dormitory. 16 ba batteries store that energy, which powers lighting and fans in every single bedroom, kitchen power, hallway power. So you see the lights there on the right-hand side for, for the pathway at night. This has been a significant improvement. Sometimes in Haiti, they might give you electricity for two hours a day, not always the same two hours. Now they have power 24 seven. In addition, it provides some security and safety that they truly need. The last component here in the center, spiritual training, is at the core of what we do here at Hope for Haiti's Children. It is our goal that all children learn God's plan for their life in school and through leadership camps, namely Camp Hope, which is what we call our camp during the summer. Kids love this time of year. They look forward to it. 
230 kids joined us last year. You can see they're at the top, they're in their cabin, uh, they're meeting new friends, and uh, they've got crafts and sports and Bible discussion groups. This year, we were incredibly excited to hear that 42 children gave their life to Christ in baptism. You can see that what these kids are experiencing is hope. Haiti is a country where I would imagine it is very easy to lose hope, but they do not. They are not forgotten. When they're hungry, they're fed. When they're thirsty, they're given water that's, that's healthy to drink. Love is tangibly felt by all of those who provide the care and through all of you who support those children. I wanna tell you just for a second what it's like behind my desk each day. First of all, I get to see donations pour in from donors, from partners, domestic, abroad, into Hope for Haiti's Children offices to help us to carry out this mission to care for these kids. After that, I get to be in conversation with Ken, with our US staff, with our Haitian staff to listen, to discuss, and to determine to determine the top priorities. What do we need to fund next? Then those, those funds are wired in and spent. Soon, it doesn't take long, and on my computer screen, I'll see little files pop up on the side. Sometimes I get curious and I click. Those are files that have been uploaded uh, from Haiti onto our Dropbox account. I click those links and I see receipts. Receipts for rice and beans, construction materials, medicine, backpacks, all sorts of things to see that that money has been spent through local vendors and local businesses. Finally, I get to see the results. I see projects that are completed, roofs that are repaired, children who broke an arm have had a cast and now can use it again. I see children who are educated and are the first to read and write in their entire family. I see smiling children who are, hung, who are not hungry, but are fed. It's a blessing and it's a blessing to show all of those results and to share them with you. I think if I were to ask myself, what question do I get asked most often? It would be this, how do I know that my money is spent in the way I intend it to be or that you say it will be? Well, here's how. Charity Navigator is the largest independent evaluator of charities. There are 1.5 million charities operating in the United States, which I think is a phenomenal thing. Of those 1.5 million, 11,000 are rated by Charity Navigator. That just means that they are filing a 990 tax return and they're large enough and organized enough to be rated. What Charity Nav Navigator looks for is financial health, transparency, accountability. They take a look at policies and procedures, the structure of your board of directors, the percentage of what's spent on program services versus administrative and fundraising. They just take a whole deep dive for a full picture. Let me share their results with you. First of all, let's pretend that this map represents 11,000 charities. In 2021, when they rated all those charities, 33% received their highest rating, which is four out of four stars. We are honored to be in that grouping. Next, only 5% received four stars for eight years in a row. Again, we are honored to be in that group. But finally, less than 1% received an absolutely perfect score, a perfect 100 for five years in a row. And we are part of that group. If you go to charitynavigator.com and you look up Hope for Haiti's Children, you will see our rating. They're in that blue square, the little yellow dot at the top right. That's our 100. Also, who doesn't like a top 10 list? If you go to top 10 list on their website and you choose charities with perfect scores, there are 81 charities listed there. Hope for Haiti's Children is on that page. In addition, there's a section for international charities. There are 15 international charities working overseas 
And again, we're listed there as well. We're honored, we're thrilled, and we are committed. We are committed to those children to do the very best we can to care for them. And we are committed to our donors. We prayerfully steward the money that you entrust us with to spend it in the best way possible to help the most children we can. And thank you for that. This is a picture of some of my favorite people, our board of directors and our staff. Hope for Haiti's Children is run by a board of directors who provide exceptional leadership and oversight. We have a staff that is talented, passionate, and very hardworking. I am honored to work alongside each one of them. Everyone on this team is dedicated to the mission of demonstrating Christian compassion to poverty-bound Haitian children, providing opportunities for them to become leaders, leaders in their home, leaders in their church, and leaders in their community. As I look at all of these pictures, up in the top middle, you'll see a picture of Cedric Boyd. Cedric has served on our board of directors for many, many years. In 2022, he will serve as our chairman. And now I'd like to introduce Cedric to lead us in a prayer. Please bow with me as we go to God in prayer. Lord God, we approach your throne today with a deep sense of gratitude. We are so thankful for the many gifts and countless blessings that you give to those of us who love you. And we thank you so much for the time we have spent together today. God, we ask that you please bring peace and comfort to the nation of Haiti as it faces so many challenges. We are grateful for the Hope for Haiti's Children organization and the outstanding work that it does for sponsored children in Haiti, all in your name. We ask that you continue to bless this ministry and those who work so diligently to bring its mission to life. Please guide our efforts in your service. Thank you for your son, Jesus. And it is in his name that we all pray, amen. Thank you again for joining us today. This webinar and more details about Project Hope 2030 are available at HaitiUpdate.com. We invite you to partner with us by contributing financially. We also welcome you to share this link with friends and family so that they can partner with us too. We hope you have a wonderful holiday and a happy new year.